Welcome everyone to Have History Will Travel. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and in this installment of The Hardest Men to Kill in History, we go back to the American Revolution, where a literal giant of a man stalked the battlefields fighting off British redcoats. His name was Peter Francisco, and once you hear his story, he was definitely one of the hardest men to kill in history. In 1765, at the age of five years old, Peter Francisco was found abandoned on a wharf in modern-day Hopewell, Virginia. From tradition, Peter had been born and raised in the Portuguese Azores, but had been given to a sea captain as an apprentice, but that had resulted in him being abandoned in Virginia. As an orphan, he was taken in by the cousin of Patrick Henry, Anthony Winston, and given a minimum education. Starting off as an orphan in colonial Virginia was not the best of beginnings, but he was able to get an apprenticeship as a blacksmith. The life of a blacksmith suited the large boy, who at age 15 was six and a half feet tall, and he possessed great strength. Also at age 15, the American Revolution was beginning. By 1776, the war was in full swing, and Peter joined the 10th Virginia Regiment. During the Philadelphia Campaign, he saw action at the Battle of Brandywine, Germantown, and Fort Mifflin, where he was wounded and had to remain in bed for two weeks while in winter camp at Valley Forge. In June 1778, Francisco was severely wounded in the right thigh at the Battle of Monmouth by a British musket ball. It was said he never fully recovered from that wound. The next year, he volunteered to be one of the attackers against Stony Point, New York, a fortified British location, and was chosen to be one of the forlorn hopes who were the ones responsible for breaking into the fort, presumably because of his size. Mad Anthony Wayne was the commander of the American forces and launched a nighttime assault. Allegedly, Francisco was the second man in the fort. Being one of the first patriots inside, the British soldiers wasted no time in attempting to throw back the infiltrators. Peter received a nine-inch long laceration on his stomach in the melee, but all the while bleeding profusely, he fought off more redcoats until more patriots could get into the fort. Also during the assault, Peter captured a British flag and got mentioned in Wayne's report to George Washington for his heroism. As the war shifted to the south, Francisco went to South Carolina to fight for the American cause. One of the most mythical acts came at the Battle of Camden, where he wielded a six-foot-long broadsword, and during the chaos of the American defeat, Peter saw that an American cannon was stuck in the mud and about to be captured by British forces, so he fought off numerous enemy troops with his sword and unhinged the 1,100-pound barrel off the carriage and put it on his shoulders, carrying it to safety. Later, at the Battle of Gifford Courthouse, he personally killed 11 redcoats with his broadsword, all while being wounded. He then went back home to Virginia to recuperate. While on his way home, what came to be known as the Francisco Fight took place. Eleven men from Bannister Tarleton's cavalry unit trapped Peter in a tavern. When they attempted to capture him, he killed three of them inside the tavern. As he emerged from the building, nine men attempted to arrest him. They wanted him to hand over his silver buckles off of his shoes. He told them that they would have to take them. So one soldier bent down to take off the buckles. Peter stole his sword, nearly severing the British soldier's hand. Another redcoat fired his pistol and grazed Peter's side. A mounted soldier pulled the trigger on his musket, but it misfired, and Francisco grabbed the gun and used it to unmount the soldier and steal his horse in order to make his escape. After the Francisco fight, Peter went to the Siege of Yorktown, where Cornwallis surrendered. Once the war ended, he was married three times, with his first two wives passing away. He descended into poverty, but was given the position of sergeant-at-arms for the Virginia State Senate. He would pass away in 1831 at the age of 70. Many of his stories are undocumented, so we don't know the validity of some of them. But four states have dedicated March 15th as Peter Francisco Day, and there is a statue dedicated to him in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Nevertheless, he will always be known as the Virginia Giant or the Giant of the Revolution. Historian, historian, where do you roam? Historian, historian, far, far from home. Have history will travel, he's the card of a man. A professor with knowledge in the heartland. To educate the world. A professor of fortune is a man called Historian Historian 